Hello fellow coffee botherers. In this video, I'm gonna be making espresso with a Sage or Breville Barista Express Impress. In the last video, I unboxed the Express and did a walkthrough of the overall idea of the machine and the various features. And in this video, I'm gonna put it through its paces. The idea of this machine is that anyone could open the box and make decent espresso with the Barista Express Impress without the same kind of learning curve that you'd need to go through to get similar results with non-assisted espresso machines. In case you didn't see that video, click here to watch it, and you're not familiar with this machine, it's a Sage Barista Express with assistance where dosing and tamping is concerned. So by taking away the need to develop skills in these two crucial areas, theoretically, anyone should be able to get pretty decent espresso with relatively little effort and virtually no learning curve. So I'm going to temporarily forget the relatively modest barista skills I've developed over the past few years and use this machine for the first time as if I was someone who's just bought this machine and who's never used a traditional espresso machine and let's see what's what. I'm going to be focusing purely on espresso in this video and the goal is simply to find out how simple it is for someone with little or no experience to just crack this out of the box and start making enjoyable espresso from it. I'll be doing a series of other videos after this including making different coffees with it, seeing how easy it is to change coffee beans and comparisons with the Brister Express, Brister Pro, the Oracle and other espresso machines. So let's make coffee. Okay, so we're using the Sage or Breville Barista Express Impress for the first time, using it as if we've got no home barista knowledge or experience whatsoever, just going through the manual. So we've put water in the water tank, I've put beans in the hopper, and now I'm just going to refer to the instructions, and it wants me to prime the machine first. Run hot water through the group for one double shot, and then run water through the water, tap the water nozzle for 10 seconds, and then water through the, or dispense steam through the steam one for 10 seconds and do that three times. So we've done that, we've primed the machine. So now let's make espresso. So we're starting off at the factory preset grind size, which is 16. Personally, I think that's gonna be far too coarse. I usually find the uh, factory preset grind size is too coarse. I'd expect to be going to around to sort of three, four, five, something like that, unless we change the internal burrs. And I wouldn't recommend doing that yet, but that's something I'll talk about in another video. If you need to go finer, if you find that you're around one, two, and you need to go a little bit finer, it's don't worry about it, it's dead easy to change the internal burr settings. You've got 10 internal burr settings as well as the external, 26 I think it is external. You've also got 10 internal, so you can just keep going finer if you need to. Whatever you do, don't go in and just put that to the finest because all you do is put the burrs together and um, that's pointless. It'll just damage your machine. So anyway, we'll start off as the factory says, as the factory, as the instruction says, we'll start off the factory preset of 16 and then put the porter filter into the grinds cradle and then press the dose button. It's now flashing at us to tamp, so we'll tamp. And it's telling us we've got too much in. So when you've got too much in, so we're overdosed, we need to use the razor tool just to trim some of that off. We'll just do that. And then put it back in, do that again. Now it's telling us we haven't quite got enough and it's flashing. You can see the lights have gone up to the just under the smiley face and the dose a bit more light is flashing. So we'll press that. It's dosed a little bit more. We tamp again. We've got the smiley face. So we're now at the right dose. And if we do another tamp, that should just polish the surface a little bit. And we've got a really nice looking puck. So now we're going to insert this into the group. So this is the uh, instructions on the tamp. Ideally smiley face. Right at the bottom is severely underdosed. So the top is overdosed and that's where we were. All you need to do is keep doing what it's telling you to until you get the smiley face. And as you saw there, the first time using it from factory preset, didn't take much of an effort to get that smiley face and hopefully 
we'll get the smiley face again when we do the next shot because that means it's learned which it's supposed to do it's supposed to learn the dose so you only have to do that first and then when you pull a shot again it should have learned how long to grind for to get the perfect dose and i've missed a step in the manual i'm going to do it as per the manual the manual wants us to purge water through the group by pressing the single cup button if you do that with your cup underneath it warms your cup at the same time so let's do what it says and purge let's pull a shot so we've got the double basket in the double standard basket the traditional basket not the dual wall double baskets we've got the standard double basket in i'm going to press the double shot button and this is all factory presets so i've not changed the volumes In the pre-infusion That was about 10, 15 seconds. So it was under extracted, it was under 20 seconds. So either the dose is too little or the grind is too coarse. Well, the dose is sorted by the machine, so it won't be that, so it'll just be too coarse. So as I thought, it'll, that 16 will be far too coarse. So now I'm just gonna weigh the dose because I want to see how accurate it is with the dosing. And this is the Akaya Luna scales which are very sensitive. So this will tell us how consistent the dose is. I'm knocking the pucks out behind me just because I found that when I'm knocking out pucks while I'm filming, doing it on the bench, it just causes a pain for the audio and stuff after. So I'm doing it behind me. I've got a big knockout tube behind me. If you're wondering what's happening to the pucks of coffee from the porta filter. And I'm going to go quite a bit finer because that was really, really fast. Usually I would tell people to only change the grind finer while the grind is running because you can get bits of coffee stuck in between. I can't find anything in the manual saying that, specifying that, so I'm following the manual, so I'm not gonna do that. So I'm literally just gonna make the grind finer. Let me take it right down to, let's try two. So let's see how much, how much it doses. So that's affected it, we're underdosed now because I've changed the grind size. And because we're grinding finer, it takes a little bit longer. So it needs to grind for a bit longer to fill the basket. So it's telling us to dose a bit more. So it's just under 18 grams. about 26 27 seconds great looking shot in terms of the crema and I tell you what it is hot as well that's something to say these are hot shots no issue at all with cool shot temperature And that's nice, that, that is a nice tasting shot. It's a bit on the weak side for me in terms of it's it's a long go essentially, it's like one, one to three. We've got about 18 grams in and just over 60 grams out. So it's like a one to three and a bit. If you're worried about the ratio, just reset the shot button or do it manually, but I'll do another video on that. But if you're not fussed, and if you like a nice, big, hot espresso, you'll like that, I think. Let's pull another one, everything the same, see how similar the dose is. Let's see how accurate this dosing system is. Again, perfect dose. And we've got 18 grams. So, accurate within about 0.2 of a gram, which is so far, which is very impressive. Lovely looking shots of espresso here. And hot, as I keep saying, because I'm burning my fingers. Decent tasting as well. 
So you know what? Going from the manual, trying to get within this 25 to 30 second window, first time use. I'm really happy with that. The taste, forgetting anything else, the taste is really impressive. I think that for people who just want a decent espresso from the touch of a button, but they don't want to compromise shot quality to the point that they go for a pod machine or a beans cut machine, it was so simple to get what I would call being dialed in enough for the kind of user that this is aimed at. Within a couple of minutes, we were there, you know, there was no messing around, really straightforward. It does what it says on the tin or the box. So there you go, you've seen me using the machine, simply following the instructions and letting the machine do everything. And in my opinion, this is a game changer. As I said in the last video, would be the case if it does what it's supposed to do, and it does. The only other machine I've used that has given me a similar level of simplicity when it comes to making decent espresso with minimal skill, effort and mess is a Sage or Breville Oracle. And obviously that's in a completely different price range. I'm not going to go into that comparison now because I'm going to do another video specifically comparing this to the Oracle. But if you're interested in that comparison, make sure you're subscribed and allow notifications so you'll see that pop up in your feed, hopefully, when I've done that video. The idea of an espresso machine which assists you in the most technical areas of espresso, dose and tamp, and that reduces the faff, the mess, and more or less does away with the need for any real learning curve, while allowing relatively authentic home espresso making ritual and delivering great espresso is clearly a good idea. What I wanted to find out in this video though is whether this machine actually delivers on that, and it does as far as I'm concerned. If you're using good coffee beans, that is, and I'd highly recommend using freshly roasted beans from a small batch roaster or speciality coffee supplier, such as my coffee, for example, from The Coffee Works. And if you want to try my coffee, use the discount code YT25 for 25% off your first order. And after that, use the discount code Coffee Botherers for 10% off all future orders. In my humble opinion, if you're someone who wants espresso at home or in the office and you want convenience, as little mess and faff as possible, then this is a great way to achieve that. It's not quite as convenient as using a bean to cup machine or a fully automatic espresso machine, but I think a lot of people will enjoy the home barista theatre versus just pressing a button, as long as it doesn't come with the same kind of faff, mess and skill requirement as using a traditional espresso machine would normally involve. And more importantly, where espresso is concerned, I don't think any domestic bean to cup coffee machine will give you as good an espresso as this will. Bean to cup machines are great for convenience but for espresso quality in my opinion there's no comparison and this machine gives you that kind of shot quality without the usual rigmarole. As I said in the last video, this isn't for home baristas. If you're getting into the home barista hobby, this isn't for you. This is for people who'd rather watch paint dry than get into coffee for a hobby. They just want a decent espresso with as little effort as possible, and this is what this machine is for. Negatives, I can't really find any. I've seen some people commenting that they don't get why a machine would be so well assisted on the espresso side and then give no assistance on the milk steaming side, because this is another area where skill is required. And I can appreciate that. I think that does actually make sense. And I do think we'll see more assisted machines from Sage or Breville. And I'd be very surprised if we don't see one with auto steaming, given that obviously the Bambino Plus and the Barista Touch and the Oracle Touch all have that. But having said that, I do think that steaming milk and getting decent texture is very, very simple with these machines. And even more so with the Barista Express with the single hole tip and the original thermocoil. It's so forgiving when it comes to the aeration phase. There's plenty of time to correct yourself. And I think most people will get the knack of producing pretty decent texture with this machine with a bit of practice. And I'll be doing a steaming tutorial with this machine soon. But yeah, I do get it. It would probably make sense for an assisted machine like this to have the same assistance where steaming is concerned. And like I've said, I think we'll see versions in the future with auto steam. I just hope they don't mess about too much with future versions, because for me, this just works. You can currently get this in the UK from just one source, and that's directly from Sage Appliances, and I'll put a link in the description. I do sometimes have discount codes to share, by the way, in the UK only, unfortunately. So if you're a member of my Brewtime mailing list, coffeeblog.co.uk forward slash Brewtime, drop me an email, kev at coffeeblog.co.uk, and if I've got a discount code, I'll share it with you. Thank you very much for watching, and please don't forget to click the like button. Thanks. High heels were initially invented for men, and that has nothing to do with clicking the like button, and I'm definitely not wearing high heels, honest, but click the like button anyway, thanks. And if you've enjoyed this video, why not click here to watch another one? And don't forget to become an official coffee botherer. You need to click this image around here somewhere for my face to subscribe. Tatty bye.